All right, greetings. My name is Scott Jarvie, and I'm doing a short video for My Faith Counts earlier this year. Well, actually, a month or so ago, they had a competition, a photo your faith competition to talk to religious based, faith counts based pictures. And uh, I was invited along with several other people to be judges for the competition. And I wanted to go through some of the pictures. Now, They've already announced the winner and have actually interviewed some of the people that participated. I wanted to give a few thoughts on each of the pictures. Now, I have some of the pictures here shown and um, we can go also to their Instagram. I just wanted to share a few quick things about many of these pictures uh, from a pr photographer's perspective. Well, I guess to th there are many of you here on this YouTube channel or wherever you're seeing it, they probably know who I am, but for those that don't, I'm Scott Jarvie. I don't necessarily post to Instagram a ton, but um, I've done photography for 13 years full time up until this year. And now I run a content publishing platform. So basically a social media platform. So I think a lot about these things and posting. And I was obviously a photographer for a long time. In fact, for one year, a little over a year, I was full time photographing religious buildings in all 50 states, over 4,000 different religious buildings of all different types. And you'll see a few sprinkled throughout my work and stuff like that. So um, I, I love this. I love when buildings are involved, but I um, have taught a lot of photographers as well. So that's also in my wheelhouse of talking about how to look at pictures and what gets people interested in pictures. Now, here's the thing about this project, about this competition, is that it's on Instagram, it was primarily on Instagram, and people were able to share stories. And I would suggest those um, viewing this go back through and, and read some of these stories because they help bring pictures to life, the stories do. Now, but if I'm looking at it as a photography competition, perhaps, is that the way to look at it? As a photographer, sometimes I look at them like, well, what's what's the most uh, what's the best picture, most exciting picture? So sometimes I'll look at the pictures a little bit bigger because in an Instagram world, when you're looking at them very small, um, they they do really well versus a very large one. Now, this of the bunch is one of the more aesthetically pleasing of the pictures. There's great. Uh, great colors in here, some interesting lighting coming in from the top right. Uh, it's very direct, the message of it. Um, well, the, I mean, the fact that she's holding a Bible, I, I don't necessarily know the symbolism together with the flowers. I think it's just, it looks beautiful. It's a beautiful moment. It's, it's, it's just beauty. You know, there's the, there's the written um, emotional beauty and the aesthetic beauty there. I don't know. Some things like that are probably involved. Let's go to Kathy's uh, picture. Actually, this is the one. This was actually one of my favorites because it has a story, multiple stories, and it's super well framed. Now, I know it's not taken with a super high quality camera or it's just um, in a darker area. So there's a little bit of a noise going on, but that doesn't really matter. Like to me, it was still one of my favorites because while well, aesthetically speaking, um, it was well taken. Like it was very, you know, you got straight lines, you got the cross was given its own space. It's not intersecting together with the child. You can see multiple of the children, even his hands not really interfering with this girl over here. Um, or boy, girl, I'm pretty sure. And then you have the message of COVID and faith and how that all inter interacted. And um, just that short message here, ready to serve. It all worked out really well. Very few distractions, a lot of attractions in this picture. Let's go to the next one. Um, these kind of, uh, what would you call this? It's, uh, it's just kind of a lot of symbols of something that's important to them. All Well, as he says here, David says, all of the ritual components of Jewish holiday um, 
all kind of in one picture together. So to someone that's part of that religion, they see lots of elements that mean a lot to them. And you've got uh, the colors go well with each other. I mean, you as a photographer, you could start to nitpick and you go, oh, well, this little, um, it's it seems so close to the edge. This is kind of one of the primary elements of it and just kind of close to the edge. And there are parts that maybe aren't as in focus, but it's still a beautiful, beautiful image with really cool color. So I love it. And then let's go over to Demas. And um, I love the aspect of, well, this moment, catching a moment right before you get this moment, like you want to get it right up until it's impossible and they're already under. Like that's the fun thing to catch. Like it seems like, how did you get that? And like the water is higher than her face at that point. Um, so that's cool. And being able to see kind of above and below really adds to the image. Um, the, the characters or the subjects, I should say, and all have their space. Um, with different types of cameras, you can you can blur out the background, you, you know, make it more of a, what they would say, bokeh in the background, blur it out. And it helps bring the attention further forward to the individuals. Now, sometimes that's not super possible with all different types of cameras and stuff like that. So it's understandable. And it's great. And uh, it is a great, great image and a great moment. This one is more, um, what would you say? It's uh, there, There's a lot less going on. It's simple. It's uh, simple is not quite the right word. Let me think of this. Um, well, it's aesthetically, it's artistic, let's say that. And it, it has a little bit more of what you would call white space or just kind of empty space leading towards a main subject, which makes this be more powerful. And I liked it. And it's probably, it's definitely one of the most artistic of the whole bunch that we, we got to see. So I'm not sure what this white part is up here. It is a bit distracting. And I think it probably a telephone line going through. Those are things that just happen. So this is kind of more, let's put it on the wall as a, as a symbol. Um, I don't necessarily know. I guess it's more like a poem where you can, anything may come to your mind. It may represent a lot of things to you. Uh, I, I did gravitate, I think, more towards ones that told a story. It did seem like that way with My Faith Counts or uh, Photo Your Faith. I was leaning towards uh, ones that had stories and a decent amount of things going on. But for artistic props, this was, this was wonderful. Um, this one works really nicely together with the story that she shared. So I know I should probably share some of these images a little bit bigger since I have that ability. Let's go back through a couple of these. So in the Instagram, this was, I think, a little bit more powerful. And then when you, when you zoom in, it's like it's so hard inside inside a church building to get enough light to get it really sharp sometimes. Oh, this is one that we missed a moment ago. We will get back to the one that we were just talking about. This one really was so much more powerful with the written word. And um, I was coming from it as, let's look at the pictures. Let's see what the pictures say. And then let's read the story. So this together with the story, was a well like it was a cool story to read and to read about this guy um, as a picture alone we don't know exactly what's going on so it requires it requires the written part which i understand because on instagram you kind of always have the written part with it as well so let's look at these a little bit larger all right so now we're back to this one so when paired together with the written word on Instagram, it, it was great because then, you know, this is, she's at home. She's in a, you know, to her, this is about comfort or peace. Let's see. Home sweet home, a place where you feel most at peace. 
a perfect space for learning and growing, a place where anyone walks in would feel the presence of love. So all that together. And then I guess the candle would represent that kind of calm peace. And then um, just kind of sitting there relaxing, having something I would suppose warm to drink and being warmed by what they're reading. Uh, nicely done. I, I love the curtains leading lines and the curtain also is providing quite nice light. So um, let's, let's, uh, let's leave this one a little bit towards the end because this one was uh, the winner of the competition and it was my top choice. Uh, this one though, I wanted to talk about a little bit more because it was a dynamic beautiful image. As an image alone, it was wonderful. The arm may be a little bit too close to the edge. Um, I'm particularly, yeah, as a photographer, kind of a stickler for spaces and giving giving the main subjects a little bit of room without feeling like they're being closed in on. But the textures and the hands, the framing otherwise was wonderful. And obviously the colors are just beautiful colors without going like crazy, you know, you still feel like this is real. People aren't going to like start wondering what's going on. That seems like a very real set of colors and a tender moment. And just everything about that is great. Now, as a picture alone, um, connected with the, the competition, My Faith Counts or um, uh, Photo My Faith, I didn't get it directly, but then I saw that the shirt was um, young for a Christ. I can't read it fully. So, and then this, then the story or the written word here is God is the winner. So I'm not exactly fully sure what's uh, going on in the picture, but beautiful picture. Now, here's an image that I think incorporated everything wonderfully. Now, Perhaps if I would have nitpick, I would have loved to see the top of the building. Um, when you, when you're missing something that you expect to be there, you spend a little extra time on it, and that's called a distraction. Meaning you are look, you're paying attention to something that isn't really important, aka the definition of a distraction. So I'm paying attention up here where I shouldn't be because I'm like, wait, oh my gosh, it was so close to being the full building. And it's hard when you're from low to top and, and likely, I mean, maybe it's even an Instagram thing where Instagram cut it on them. I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but nevertheless, everything else is just perfect. You got like leading lines going into the corners and, and just enough of the book. You didn't need the full book, but it's got a great border underneath and now, to me, like, I obviously have a connection to buildings, having photographed so many and having photographed so many of these buildings that were in a state of disrepair, where windows were bu busted out and boarded up and, um, and trees were growing out of the building. I've been to quite a few of these and, and there's so much, uh, there's gotta be so many stories connected to that and communities where people had gone to them. So I think about this a lot. And then to have this beautiful framed uh, picture, she's looking up at the building and in the like up, uh, you know, from down upwards type picture, it says something um, strong that way. And then the final touch like this, just put it over the edge for me, the Maxwell leadership Bible. I've, I'm not very familiar with this particular Bible, but to have the word leadership in there just made it like all of those little symbols all put together, you know, looking up. It's like she's ready to get something done. It's that that pose just looks like you're getting things done. And then to have a book that says leadership, because that's what's needed is, you know, someone young to go out there and to make it to bring back. I don't know. There, there's lots of symbols that you could read into. I don't necessarily want to read into it too much, at least here, but I do. 
And I think other people will, and that's a great picture, is when someone can can look at it for a while and think, this symbolizes a lot more, and I can stay on this picture for a lot longer. And, and that's great. And I want to read it. So, and when I was presented this, I was sold on this picture before even reading this, but it's beautiful afterwards as well. My neighborhood is suffering from the lack of knowledge and shut their minds to thinking divine. Satan, you're running out of time. Jesus' ambassador will change their minds. It is God's vine that produces fruit of every kind. Beautifully written as well. So just full of art and beauty and symbols, symbolism. Religious faith is often full of symbolism as well. So I just think it's a beautiful connection there. So that's my thoughts on the on the top eight pictures. I'm not sure if this was uh, helpful to everyone or you enjoyed it, but I like going through pictures. It's also a sensitive thing sensitive thing going through pictures. I know that. And I hopefully I, I, uh, I shared some thoughts on, uh, you know, push us to, to take more thoughtful or well-crafted pictures, but also to appreciate all pictures, no matter what. Um, I love pictures in here that I knew were, you know, like some of, they don't have to be perfect to be of benefit and uh, and to make people happy and to make them think and to make them feel closer to their faith. But if we can, let's then we can take then we can strive for excellence where we can and uh, appreciate excellence where we when we can. And I I hope believe that Faith Counts did a good job. And I appreciated being part of this. And uh, thanks for letting me share my thoughts.